But Lord, you see us and we invite the Holy Spirit right now on day three. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to day three of this 21 day fasting and praise challenge. And if you've not heard yet, we're meeting the Lord these 21 days. First thing at the top of the year. So welcome. You are in a brand new year. Today is January 3rd. So we're on day three, and that is come to the well. Congratulations on making it this far. This is a wise decision to prioritize your time and pursue the wisdom of God into a brand new year. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Vanessa, for jumping on. <laughs> Amen. I don't understand that either. I'll get it fixed today. Technical difficulties in Jesus' name. Go away. But we're giving God this 15 to 30 minutes daily, maybe more, <clears throat> and we're going to pursue him. And say this with me. Say, I'm going to put first God. Amen? I'm going to put first God. Put him first this year. And so we know when we, when we decide to draw close to God, guess what the promise is? He's going to draw close to us, right? And so this month, we're engaging him. And so, God, we just thank you now. But by day 21, you don't know what's happening, but by day 21, I promise you're going to look back and you're going to be wooed by what God has done in your life. If you hadn't already done so, grab your communion elements because we're going to be doing communion daily <clears throat> to remember and bring back to mind what Jesus did at Calvary to reinforce our victory. And yes, and put to shame our enemies. And so these first seven days, we're doing repentance of the deadly sins. And today is greed. We'll get into that. To say enough is enough, right? That we, uh, we're tired of Satan and his demons, and they cannot oppress us any longer. And so we're taking a stand, and we're igniting a shift. That's a holy shift. Also, please share this video with your friends and family. Invite others to this wonderful way of kicking off 2023 to seek wisdom, counsel, understanding, to set our courses right for 2023. Now, if you recall, we explained about the Z factor in my book that is new, 21 Days of Fasting and Praise. If you haven't got it, you can download it online or just tag me and I'll send you a copy. I sent Vanessa 10 copies to Kansas. I can send you more too. But the Z factor is the special ingredient that's found deep in your core, okay? It's the warrior bride who is partially laying dormant right now, waiting to be unleashed. It's the pizzazz that Phineas had. In the book of Numbers, when he stopped the plague, right? And the Lord said he was zealous for God's honor. Just like when young King David slew off Goliath's head. Remember what he said? He was zealous for God's honor. And he said, how dare you mock my God? And that's what the Lord is looking for. Some people who are zealous for God's honor. And how do we show that? Well, first, loving what he loves and hating what he hates. Amen? And so in seeking more of the fear of the Lord, it's calling and knowing Father as Abba, as Father, as we live to please and hold him in posture in our hearts wherever we go. Here's perhaps the most endearing part of being zealous for God that I'm discovering at almost 60 years old. And that is God's honor is the fact that he sent his one and only son, Christ Jesus, who he loved us enough to die for us. Let's put that in perspective just for a moment before we get started. This is the uncreated God of the universe who knows every star and planet by name, right? He created everything under the sea and in the sea and holds it all together, right? And then he gave us life and knew in advance that we would bite the apple and sin came and knowing in advance that he would have to send his only beloved son, folks, that in and of itself should make us weep and tremble that the living God put his life on the line for us. And folks, so here's the way I've been making this knowing Jesus more of a reality in my life experience. I'm almost 60 years old. Like I said, on planet Earth, I'm just beginning to scratch the surface of walking moment by moment with him. I'm only ankle deep in this. And I wake up at night sometimes and I meditate on him at three in the morning. But I'm just starting to live my life as if. What is as if? <laughs> I'm not boasting here. I'm just getting real. As if. What do I mean by that? It's this, it's a simple idea, but manifesting it is another. Living as if for me is actually knowing Christ, carrying his glory right here in my spirit, day by day, moment by moment, with each breath. You all know that five years ago, I suffered a stroke, I came back. And so each day for me is endearing 
It's his being the flame of every breath I take. It's his producing a loving and a leaning, a rejuvenated, transformed bride walking in the identity of Christ with authority. That's the key. We may walk in his identity, but this year there's going to be more authority. And I'm convinced more and more as I'm a living, walking, breathing tabernacle, carrying, taking, uh, uh, hearing, seeing, breaking bonds, uh, tasting Christ moment by moment through the day. It's a living tabernacle. See him work through my life. See, folks, I'm thinking for this 21 days, it's to learn to operate not only from knowing, but also walking in authority. And so we're carrying the ark inside. Think of this. We are the temple of God, right? And so we need to care about our health. Remember how, how, we, uh, how the kingdom uh, of God was carried, the ark of God, excuse me, was carried by David so tenderly. These priests had to carry the ark. If they stepped out of line, the fear of God would strike them. Or if the wrong person touched the ark, right, keep it in balance, they'd fall dead. I mean, think about that for a second. This is the temple of God. If we're carrying the ark in us, we need to treat this temple with health and exercise and it, would, would, the, would the Holy Spirit want to inhabit an unholy temple? Of course not. And so that's why we're fasting. And that's why we're going through this repentance. So that we can be walking as being seated with him in heavenly places. We're more than conquerors, right? We're seated with him as co-heirs of Christ. And so the last part is this Ephesians 3.19. It's coming to the reality. That yes, we prayed this before. And it's about coming into this fact. To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, it's an inherent heart thing, not a head thing, that you and I may be filled with all the fullness of God. Wow. Think about that. We can be filled with the fullness of God today? Woo! Well, what's, what's the first commandment? To love the Lord thy God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love others as we love ourselves. So it's about that. Being full comes with a promise. You have to have... Uh, you have to have that love to be full of God, right? And so that's what we're doing here in those 21 days. God is giving us new breath. And I want you to know that in 2023, I want you guys to just close your eyes for a minute because I'm going to prophesy the breath of God over you right now. Praise the Lord. Take a deep breath right now. Woo! Thank you, God. We've received the fullness of God as I pray this over you right now. Oh, a fresh full breath of God is coming over you right now for the fresh airs of Christ. This year, you shall operate, yes, from the seat of knowing your identity and speaking to the mountains, but with a much greater authority. This must take place, says the Lord, for my kingdom to be established. Some of you will be sent to new mountains you never thought possible. Some of you, it will influence governments. Some will be sent to the media some to technology sectors. Others shall go to sports and music and entertainment mountains and bring the kingdom influence to mountains you never thought possible. Welcome to 2023, your new chapter. Praise God. This is a year of your restoration and retribution over the enemies like fear, uh, loss, attack, okay? Poverty, sickness, and infirmities. Accidents must go. All harm must lead the body of Christ. And I prophesy over that you right now. This is a year I'm expecting God to do what only he can do. And as you walk in the identity of Christ and use your staff and your sword of the spirit to declare this word, I shall reroute you, says the Lord. I shall reroute you in my authority to reroute you to a new mountain. Delays will stop and supernatural destiny will be inherited by the kingdom of God. I prophesy life to dry bones across the airways right now. Supernatural acceleration is here for the heirs of Christ. Healing and deliverance are coming across the airways right now. Healing to knee joints, pains of all kind must lead in Jesus' name. Attacks of depression and the torment from the demonic go right now in Jesus' name. I break the power that's been holding your supply lines at bay. And I speak provision is coming even now to fill your needs as you take up your new mantle of authority. I hear the word establishment. I woke up and heard establishment this morning. The Lord is laying the groundwork of a new foundation of your new Goshen, your safe place, your place of provision, 
is coming that you will serve for the next seven years, this next seven year season. And then I heard the word stability for some of you who have been just tottering. So I speak stability for 2023 over your lives, your ministry, over your businesses, over your marriages, over your relationships. In Jesus' name, the Lord says, I'm blowing a fresh wind from my heirs for creativity, inheritance. A fresh wind is coming and is here now. Stay steady and keep your sails up and lamps trimmed with the oil of my presence, says the Lord, and walk as if this is your last day. Walk as if you are a living tabernacle. Walk as if I'm right there beside you. Keep your sails up inside you. He is the ark of his presence. All right. So say this, say this with me. Repeat these words. Say, I am a living tabernacle. I am a living tabernacle. Hallelujah. And this divine shift is happening according to your obedience to allow his identity to be seen in bold authority and confidence in public places. He told me, Jeff, you got to put on my robe. You got to wear my colors in public town squares, walking in the fear of the honor of my name more than the fear of man, says the Lord. He says, I'm igniting a shift because you have shown to be zealous for my honor, says the Lord. The Z shall be your confidence. Amen? Amen? Say amen if you agree. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So be zealous for God in this season. And so remember, I told you before, 5783 on the Hebrew calendar is the year of retribution. And it's one of the opportunities of great challenge and wisdom needed. And so this year is a, is a year of judgment occurring of both blessing and curse, depending on which side of the retribution you're on. So stay close to Jesus in the boat and walk on water when he says, come to me, come to me. So we're going to come to him right now. Go over our uh, meditation. Day three, come to the well. Praise the Lord. I'm so excited for you all. Again, why are we fasting? Why are we fasting food or social media? or uh, too much talking. Some of you have chose a Daniel fast. Some of you have chose to not spend as much money these 21 days. That's fine. Whatever your fast is, let it be. But it's here in Titus 2, 11 and 14. Let me read this. It says in Titus, why repent? First off, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify, that's the word, purify for himself, a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. There's that word zealous again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we're fasting and we're driving in and we're repenting. So we're hot for God, not lukewarm. Remember the first day, Revelation, he spit out of the mouth those who were lukewarm, right? And so we've got to be bold for Christ and shake off worldliness and find godliness. So that's where we're at. Also, don't forget, get your copy of the book. I want you guys to know you're going to sign this renewal of the believer's covenant with God at the end. That you're no longer your own, but you're thine, you're his, okay? And this covenant will mean something to you. You put that on your prayer wall. Praise the Lord. Come to the well. The scripture is John 4, 13. In my book, it says, Jesus answered and said to her, everyone who drinks of this water shall thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall come up in him a water springing up into everlasting life, John 4, 13. Amen, amen. And then again, John 7, he says, if any man is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture says, there's the important part, from his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. So there's a governing principle here. As much as you can take water is as much as you believe and act on his word. Okay, so there is a, 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 not a tradition, but a condition to having the living water. Put your hands on your stomach right now and declare, Father God, release the living waters in me, gushering out 
that I could bring people your Trinity in Jesus' name. All right? So we have to have the living waters. And the meditation, it says, drink my water on a regular basis as a lifestyle. As the scripture says, this is the condition of your believing in me. When you encounter rough currents on your life journey, get out your barrel and drink. <laughs> Be refreshed in the maelstrom. My well is never dry, but has eternal depths. Praise the Lord. Some of the conditions to my promises command a digging of the well. Get this. This includes prayer and fasting. That's a discipline. Meditation. Understanding the beauty realm of God. What's the beauty realm of God? You mean we serve a beautiful God? Praise the Lord. We sure do. Knowing him as eternal master. The flowing rivers are the dynamics of my life flowing on your inside as a living tabernacle. Your thirsts and cravings will change to righteous cravings as you continually drink from the well. My perfect leadership over created order is clothed in humility and kindness toward the weak and broken. Let me tell you a story. Yesterday, I was driving and a homeless man was at the stop sign and I felt, I'm going to give, I want to give, I want to give. I love giving to homeless people. I don't care if the Lord, you know, they're guilty if they use it for drinking. But anyway, I opened the window and it was a Vietnam vet. And you know what he said after I gave him, I looked at my wallet, I only had $3. I felt bad that I only had $3 to give him. And I said, here, brother. And he says to me, I had to write this down. He said, no one opens their window for me. Oh, and I felt that in my heart. If no one opens their window for him, how will he know the love of God? Jesus. And so I wish I had more, but I did give him Jesus. And that was awesome. So as you go through the day, just slow down and look where God is leading you and introspect in yourself, and just be free to be compassionate and give to those who have less than you. That's why our word today is greed. So let's move into our introspection. The desire for material wealth or gain over living the spiritual lifestyle is greed. It's covetousness, right? To follow what the material world has. And so God, we just thank you for your word. Do you find yourself always wanting more? Okay. Material things will not bring peace in this life. My son and Baylor, his wife, said it at church the other day. They said, look, if we die today, we'll be in heaven. We've already won. The race is already secure. Praise the Lord. But James and Baylor, they've had the house. They've had the, the rover and material things, and it doesn't fill. You all know that. Amen? And so it asks here, where can you develop more charity and selfless love toward your time with me? All right, so if we are loving the world as we love ourselves, right? If you were ill and at the hospital, what you want to be prayed for? In fact, oh my gosh, I don't know if you guys heard this last night, the Monday night football game. Damar Harlan, a 24 year old, at 8 55 p.m., he fell on the field, cardiac arrest. They canceled the game. This is like one of the first times this ever happened. And I just walked by the TV. I don't usually watch Monday night football, but it was on. And Jody was watching church in bed, the Buffalo Bills game. They ceased it. And they were interviewing and they said they've never seen this type of emotion on the field before. The players were praying in a huddle. And it was like God showed up. He showed up. So right now, let's just go to prayer for Damar Harlan. He right now is in, in critical condition in the hospital. So just lift up your hands and say, God of heaven, restore Damar Harlan's heart. God, bring him out of this cardiac arrest, this critical condition, that you will be glorified in this now. We evict Satan's works, and we want to see the TV exclaim, Jesus glorified. That no other explanation could be that it was prayer that woke him up. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. 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 Okay, let's go ahead now into our communion time. Get your bread. Get your bread. And so, oh, the last part of this. Praise God. As we take our bread, I'm just so excited. We're repenting for greed. We're feasting on Christ's body. Get your bread out, right? We're going to walk in freedom this year. Hallowed be thy name. Thank you, God. We're going to put on godly character. That's what part of what we're doing here with this bread in hand. Let's pray this together in your hearts out loud if you want. Repeat it in your hearts. Father, please forgive us for greed, selfish ambition, idolatry, conceit, and arrogance. Forgive us for longing things and placing them over you and not for being good stewards of your blessing. As the church of God, 
We renounce any gods of materialism. Father, please help us to spend wisely and not excessively. That goes for me. Guys, hey, this is for me as much as you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I felt my spirit getting dull at the end of the year, and that's why I decided to jump in and just reignite ourselves. Pray, Abba, break the bondage of conspicuous consumption over our nation, Lord, and our government leaders who, who, who decentralize the dollar and weaken it, God. We stand in proxy for our nation, and we plead the blood of Christ today. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, it is your will that we do not lay up material treasures on earth ourselves, where moth and rust can destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up treasures in heaven for ourselves, where neither moth nor rust can destroy, where neither thieves break in and steal. Your word states that our lives do not consist in the abundance of the things we possess. Therefore, we will be aware of covetousness. Amen. The one who lays up treasure for himself is not rich towards you. Where our treasure is, there where our heart will be also. We confess that life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Therefore, we declare that we as a church body will seek your kingdom and your righteousness, and all things will be added unto us. Amen. We confess that we will be a church that will continue to do good works, and we will be ready to give and be willing to share when you bring it up, Lord. Hallelujah. As we, as we partake of your body that was broken for us, let us operate as you who took the bread and split it to feed the masses. Hallelujah. Okay, let's eat the bread. Hallelujah. Okay, raise your cup. Raise your cup. This is exciting. You want to know what real revival looks like? <clears throat> we declare Acts 2, 44 for 47, the fellowship of believers. This is the picture of true revival. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. A sense of awe came over everyone, and the apostles performed many wondrous signs. All the believers were gathered together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and all goods they shared with anyone who was in need. Isn't that the opposite of greed? Yes. With one accord, they continued to meet daily in the temple courts and break bread from the house to house. There's the cell group churches, house to house prayer meetings. It's coming. It's coming. Sharing their meals with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their numbers daily those who were being saved. Woo! Isn't that revival? Isn't that what we're looking for? It's coming quicker than you think. The, the breath of God is coming. Amen. I just want to drink now. We're going to drink to that prayer. Take it as you're living it right now. As much as we do this, we remember Christ Almighty. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want to end with a declaration that you all can share. These declarations are words that bring power into your life. This is not just reciting a cantation. These are the words of God that bring life. And he is the word and your word is in, in you. We're living tabernacles, right? So declare this with me out loud. Say, I declare. Breakthroughs are coming in my life. Sudden bursts of God's goodness. Not a trickle, not a stream but a flood of God's power, a flood of healing, a flood of wisdom, a flood of favor. I am a breakthrough person, and I choose to live breakthrough-minded. I am expecting God to overwhelm me with his goodness and amaze me with his favor. This is my declaration. So be it. Amen. All right, looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Share this with your friends. Let's get some people online. I will fix the Zoom link. I'm sorry about that. But you all have a fantastic day. I love you all. May the peace of God that surpasses understanding fill you with all hope and joy and the fullness of God as you walk out today. Amen. Amen.